It's always just the greatest joy to be able to dive deep into God's Word together. And today we're going to continue looking at Mark chapter number 2, specifically today, verse 13 through verse number 17. You know, as we think about salvation and we think about those who come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to remind everybody who is tuning in to the podcast, the radio ministry today, of this one simple truth. Those of us who have been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, we all have a past. We all have a a journey which has led us to salvation. None of us proclaim perfection. As a matter of fact, if we were to claim perfection, we would have no need for a Savior. All of us who have come to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we recognize our desperate need for Him, our desperate need for a Savior. So we all have a past. And today, I just want to just, just pause for a moment and just, and just get you to think about who you were before salvation. You know, friends, the Bible tells us that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. In Jewish culture, there was, there was no one more despicable than a tax collector So so a tax collector in Jewish society was a Jewish individual who had turned his back on his fellow countrymen in order to swear allegiance to the Roman government and then turn around and tax his own people. And in taxing his own people for the Roman government, he was now allowed to swindle money from them to put into his own pocket so he could add extra tax for himself. This is why in the Bible, in the book of Luke, when you see Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house, you remember that Zacchaeus, when he repents of his sins, he says, Lord, if I've, if I've stolen money, if I've swindled money, if I've done anything to anyone in that way, I'll pay it all back. And Jesus says, salvation has come to this house. It's because a tax collector would be one who would take money and put it in his own pocket. So the Jews, they despised tax collectors. They despised those who had turned their back on their own fellow man and go to Rome in order to swear allegiance to the Roman army. They were occupiers of the state, if you will. And so tax collectors were the lowest of the low. They were the scum of the earth in, in Jewish eyes. So it's rather startling here in Mark chapter number 2 to read the following account. Then Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd was coming to him, and Jesus taught them. Then moving on, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office. So Jesus is passing by, and the Bible says, He looks over at the tax collector's office, that despicable individual, that one that is despised by all Jews everywhere. Jesus looks at him and he sees this despised individual and Jesus says to him, follow me. I mean, friends, this is quite an amazing moment, especially if you're in the crowd that day. You know, if you're in the crowd that day, this is the last person that you believe that Jesus is going to associate himself with. This is the last person that you're thinking that Jesus is going to say, hey, you, I want you to be my disciple. This is the lowest of the low, the scum of the earth. And yet it's that person that Jesus says, come here, come here. I want you to, I want you to follow me. Remember, remember this morning who you were before salvation. Because, friends, here's the thing. You you weren't much different than that Jewish tax collector, the lowest of the low, dwelling in sin, worldly, fleshly, in the muck, the mire of this world. And yet at some point in the past, the Lord Jesus Christ saw you and said, Come here. I want you to follow me. And and what happens next is is amazing. So, So the Bible paints the picture that that, that Levi, we know him later as Matthew, that he 
literally drops the books. He puts down the money. He empties his pockets, if you will. And he leaves that life behind in order to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this next portion of scripture because the Bible says the very next scene, verse 15, while he was reclining at the table in Levi's house. So where does Jesus go? He calls Matthew, he calls Levi to follow him. And then what happens? Levi says, I want you to come to my house. And so Jesus goes to his house and the Bible says many tax collectors and sinners were also guests with Jesus and his disciples because there were many who were following him. Where does Jesus go? He goes to the house of Levi. Where does Levi go? Levi goes and tells his friends. Levi goes and tells his his, his tax collecting buddies, he goes and tells those who are sinners and he says, you have to come meet this guy. Friends, when we think about our salvation, we think about who we were before salvation, let me remind you that once you come to salvation, there's just something in you, you have to tell somebody. And that's exactly what Levi did. He, he left the tax collector's booth and he went and got friends. And he said, you got to come to my house tonight. Jesus is going to be there. You have to meet this man. You have to listen to this man. You have to know what he says. He's more than just a man. And so they all gather at the house and Jesus is there associating with the tax collectors, the sinners, the scum of the earth. We see Jesus here embracing the sinner, but not endorsing the sin. The Bible never says that he engaged in their lifestyle and the sinful things he was doing. However, he did rub elbows with sinners. And friends, we should too. We do not dive into the same things they dive into, but we should not be ashamed or afraid to associate with sinners. After all, if we withdraw ourselves from sinners, how will we ever win anybody for the gospel of Jesus? And so follow the model of Jesus here. He goes to the home of of Levi. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we have a member here at Flat Creek and, and uh, her and her husband periodically through the year at their house, they have what they call Matthew parties, Matthew gatherings, where they just invite people they know from their work, from uh, the golf course, from different places they are that they know are lost to come to their house, to gather them there, to, to give them a meal, to give them something to eat and give them the gospel. Friends, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Well, look what the Bible says. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they looked at his disciples and they said, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? So why is Jesus doing this? And Jesus heard this. He told them, those who are well do not need a doctor, but the sick do, know, do need one. I did not come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners. Those who are well, they don't need to go to the doctor. I, 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 didn't, I didn't come to call the religious. I came to call the broken. I came to call the sinner. I came to save that which was lost. Friends, today we must be diligent like Jesus to go out and to reach the world with the gospel because there's so many around us that need him. And you might be tuning into this podcast today and you may have never come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you may think you're too far gone. You've done too much. You could never save someone like me. Friends, let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ came to save sinners just like you. Won't you give him your life today? Won't you come to him in saving faith and let him cleanse you from all sin? He wants to, friends. I love you. God bless you. And I'll join you tomorrow on New Horizons.